Today, Thursday, November 12, 2020, we pray for those who have been departed, our loved ones, but also we pray for those who are sick, especially any kind of illness, and those who need to recover for the COVID-19. Expectation. This is my topic today about expectation. For believers, no believers, Catholic, no Catholics, Christian or Christians, this topic is very important to apply in our life because sometimes uh, we can uh, have expectation maybe because our personal believers, that is expectation, our personal believers about occurrences that may take place in the future or sometimes expectation develop from a combination of individual experiences and knowledges and for instance if one has the knowledge that their relatives bear this next Saturday and the experience indicates that the family get together was held each of the past five years on, on the relatives birthday then it is reasonable to have the expectation for a birthday celebration is unlikely to occur next Saturday Expectations serve a passive function to prepare humans for action. The choices humans make are based on the expectation they hold for how their decision will affect themselves and the world around them at some future time. Expectation range is certainly from a small possibility of occurrence to an almost certain occurrence. Expectations can be automatically and not giving much talk, for instance, expecting that it will be sufficient oxygen available for breathing, or that can be delivered, such as expecting one will be make a positive impression on one or new acquaintances. Consequences of expectations uh, happen, you know, because affect how people think, feel, and believe and behave. Expectations affect our thought processes involving in attention, interpretation, explanations, and memory. People pay more attention to information that is consistent with expectations or noticeable, inconsistent. Expectations guide how people interpret their information, especially people are more likely to interpret uncertain information consistent with their expectations. And this is what happened in these elections time in the United States, as in other countries or in another event, people expect something and believe that this was going to happen, but that is not the reality. So people are more likely to generate explanation for an event when it is contrary to expectations rather than consistent with expectations. Finally, people are more likely to remember information that is either clearly consistent with expectations or clearly inconsistent. So again, that is being very important because when you are a religious person or even you are not religious, you can understand what you are expecting today, and how you expect it in the life, how you expect it via your believer, how you expect it for your religions, or how you expect it for God. So that is what happened with the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will become as Jesus. So Jesus said and replied, the coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed. And no one will be announced, look here it is, or there is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. So the kingdom of God is among you. What it does mean? It is the kingdom of God and how it is that is among us? The kingdom of God can be spoken of two ways. At the final coming of Christ, at the end of time, his kingdom will be permanent and visible to all. He will destroy all sin and evil and will be made new. Not the world, not the person, it's the sin. That is important and clear to everyone, even if you're not a believer, to understand and be clear of that and don't expect of something else different. We will reign eternally and charity will convert every mind and heart what a joyful gift to anticipate with much hope. But this is passage especially refers to the kingdom of God that is already in our midst. What is that kingdom? It is the kingdom present by grace living in our hearts and the present to us in a countless way every day. First, Jesus longs to reign in our hearts and rule our lives. The key question is this, do I let him to take control? 
He is not the short of king who imposes himself in the dictatorial way. He does not exercise his authority and demand we obey. Of course, this will happen in the end when Jesus returns, but for now his invitation is just that, and the invitation. He invites us to give him the kingship of our lives. He invites us to let him take full control. If we will do all that, he will be used commands to us which are commands of love. They are decrees that draw us into true and beauty, that refresh us and renew us. In second, Jesus' presence is all around us. His kingdom is present every time charity is present. His kingdom is present every time grace is at work. It is so easy for us to be overwhelmed by the evils of this world and to miss the presence of God. God is alive in countless ways all around us. We must always strive to see this present by inspiring but eat and love it. So today, Pilgrim Society is committed to help people how to organize the expectation, how to understand the expectations in the best way. But we, we need to, your help, your cooperation, your financial donation will make possible to hire people with expertise in this area but also to extend our geographic uh, service and also to attend other people's needs. Go to our website, pilgrimsocialty.com and make your donation and do that other people have the second chance and have a bright future. I'm praying for you, pray for me, may God bless you.